let's start with Mike. Tell us a little bit about Memorial Health System. Tell us about your role there, your journey with Memorial Health. Well, it's, it's interesting, can you hear me okay, that when Greg talked about moving from, when I got involved, we were I was really interested in the bottom-up improvement piece that I thought Kinexus could afford for us. And then I quickly ran into the administration wall of administration going, no, this is not what we really want. So we started more of the top down. So what my team has been doing has been trying to allow, work with Kinexus to allow administration to accomplish what they want to accomplish while in the background trying to build a bottom up culture. Does, does that resonate at all? So it's, it's kind of, so yeah, we're, we're, we're a small um, 200 bed hospital. Um, now, if that's if that's pertinent anymore, we have two hospitals and three EDs, two urgent care, twenty five hundred, you know, three hundred employed physicians. So, for those of you in healthcare, um, you, you kind of know what that involves. Um, we've been at it for um, uh, with Kinexus for three years. We, I've been in this role as director of process excellence for six now. I think Tom, yeah, six. Tom is my one of my associates. So. If you, if you, where's my clicker? Click to me. So what we've done is tried to, <laughs> from a bottom up, we, we haven't really got the cross, this is supposed to be about cross-functional, I'm going to tell you how I'm trying to change the culture and then we can talk about whether we got in a, you can tell me whether you think we're in cross-functional or not. But we built a system of belts, you know, and Mark will probably get mad at me for or using belted, but I had to, had to come up with some way to designate your level of training and your level of experience. So. We start with the, the white belt first, which is a two-hour training we do with our team, with, with frontline staff. Our team conducts it, and we introduce them to Kinexus, and we make them a user. So when someone asks me, I think someone wanted to know how you roll this out. This is how we roll it out. You don't really get to be part on Kinexus until you've attained the white belt status. There's a little quiz we give with it. Then there's yellow for all of our leaders. Green belt would be for leaders that have completed a certain number of projects, and we have it all spelled out. Black belt is my team. They're all... Um, train black belts, and then we have the champions. We force the VPs to be champions. Okay, we, we say, you've got, you've got to be championing that. How, how many people here have some sort of a belt program in their organization? Yeah, I, I would say probably about 25% of the people yeah. we talk to, this is one of the ways that they kind of try to engage uh, a, a, an employee base. And we stole this philosophy from one of Mark's, you guys went to one of Mark's workshops in Indiana. And they were trying to do that. They were training folks. So we thought this would be really a good way to start. So we've, the next slide is we're tracking in Kinexus the number of folks that we've trained. So you can see I've got a little widget. And that's moved up past since we, we shot that when we did some classes last, last week. So that's our little, my so, little indicator. Mike, if we go back, can, can mm -hmm. I ask? Sure. So the white belt, is that just part of orientation? Like no. when you become a new no. employee? No, it's, no, not yet. Um, God, that'd be a lift. But um, so now it's we we do, we develop the system, this process, and the training, and then we just offered it up to leaders and said, if you want us to do your team, um, let us know, and we'll come. We 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 have a little um, smart board we drag around to different departments, so we can go to them. We can be at their gamba and talk to them and and do our presentation, and then they have a little quiz. Are you finding good? People want the leaders. Actually, want yeah, this? they're more excited about it than the leaders. The frontline staff gets really jazzed by it. Yeah, they, they really get excited about it. And then, and then they, well, how can we become yellow? And it's like, well, we'll, we'll talk about that. It's a little, a little heavier lift. Do they self-select into yellow and green? And yeah, they would have to at this point. And leaders we train as yellow. Gotcha. So all the leaders went through yellow belt. And then as far as like the ones, the people who kind of go through the green belt options, mm -hmm. uh, is that an individual that's, thing? Or is that's that be an individual thing that the, the, who's someone who's already yellow belt will complete three projects with, with us coaching them. And we say, okay, you've done enough to yeah. attain. And, and we haven't done, got one yet. All of the coaching is internal. Yes. You're not using external consultants or no. anything like that for any it's of us. the belts. There's there's seven of us. Interesting. Are you tracking uh, the other belts too, like the white belt? The yeah, we just belt? don't. Not the yellow belts. We, we they, that's a must for them. Administration has has said that the leaders have to be yellow belts, so that we don't track that. And there are no greens yet, so it's on the track. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to do on this panel was to get a sense of how people like Mike use Kinexus to keep track of this. I mean, what we saw that 2,500 employees, I'm, sh I'm assuming 20% leaders, which means you've got 500 plus leaders in the organization. You know, it becomes a little bit of an administrative challenge to, mm -hmm. to manage all that. So 
Mike, this is your personal This is dashboard. my dashboard, right. and I've, I've changed it since then. I can't, you guys probably can't see it either, but I've got like green belts and yellow belts and my team's work there. And then some, some of our stats for our department below, you can see the graphs peeking up there, but I couldn't get the whole. But this is the board that you personally use to keep personal. track of everything. Yeah. How often are you daily. in this board daily? daily? A couple times a day. Does anyone else use a similar board or do you feel like you're kind of, this is. You have to ask my team. Um, I, th I think so. Uh, um, I've built boards for people to, to focus on the things that they are doing. The, the beauty of the system, as you well know, is that you can sit and, and, and configure it for, it's best to sit and talk to somebody and say, to a leader and say, well, what do you want to see? What do you want to do? And I can make it happen. And we put it on their board form so that they're going to something that's relevant. Yeah, I, I, I think in just talking to people, the more that you have your personal board to do this kind of work, the more you'll get in the habit of using the platform. Mm -hmm. And then the more you can teach other people to kind of have their personal board to do the work. I think the dashboards in Kinexus have really evolved to be, uh, uh, to yeah. be pretty powerful mm -hmm. in that regard. This one was interesting to me. This yeah. is your um, leaders, right? These are the Yeah, people. I'm not as, I mean, this is something that the, the health system's kind of in a financial crunch. So the, the in the spring, everyone, they kind of said, we got to start saving some money. And they wanted each leader to do a, and Mark, if I talked to you about this, the 100 day workout, they wanted the leaders to do 100 day workouts. And I'm like, so it was very prescribed. But anyway, they wanted everybody to have three projects. So they asked me to lead this. And I said, the only way I can watch 200, well, there's, yeah, there's close to 200 leaders with three projects each is to, is to use this software. So that's been driving Kinexus out to our team, uh, to the leadership team. So e these are sorted by vice president and their, their reports. Oh, so, this, so these are the vice presidents, yeah. they're the projects mm -hmm. of the, their the, reports? They, that they own. How often do you meet with the vice presidents to Not talk about Not frequently these? enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're here for, right, is to talk through yeah, the process. Yeah, I mean, it would be and, once a month as a group for an hour, but it would, they, and they need to be meeting with their, their, their folks that are running, their, their leaders that are doing the projects. So do they have their own dash, like does yeah, Mr. Well, D. Smith have his own dashboard or her own dashboard? If they want it, yes, I would build it for them, but yeah. they, they, you know, they have to come and you know, can say this is what I want to do. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting kind of future state opportunity. Yeah, we're getting there. It's, it's like herding cats. What do you so, use? What do you use the project for? <laughs> say what? What, what do you well, use this the was, project so for? Well, this was so our CFO says that accounting. You know, so this is the tricky part, and and we can talk about this offline. But hard dollars versus soft dollars, right? So there's the two minute lean thinking or two second lean thinking, right? And the CFO is like, no, we must have all hard dollars and everything before it's approved as a as a as a completed project. Must have must show hard dollars. Well, that's really tough in the lean world, I think, to go. Yeah, you know, we want to save you two seconds a day. How do you account for that? But I had so I had to create a board with Jake's help for uh, for accounting. My buddy in accounting to look at these and say yes or no. So I believe this is his board. Yeah. Well, this is the project. This is the total projects. But I created a board for him to so he can go and look at everything and he can sign. And we use milestones for him to sign off. So. When they complete the countermeasure or the improvement, uh, they hit ready for accounting, and then it drops onto the accountant's board, and he can approve it or not with the milestone. Yeah, I, I tell you, this is something I see over and over again. We were talking a little bit about the role of of the PI leader as a salesperson in the organization. You know, I, I don't think that we should be doing improvement work just to try to drive the financial benefit, but when you're selling this to leaders within an organization, having this information is critical, especially if there's a leadership change. So if you're not tracking this sort of stuff, I would implore you to, to start thinking about it and, and ask Jake and ask Lisa and our CE team how to do it. Because when you need the data, it's nice to have it at your fingertips, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Helps. All right, let's talk Pam. Yes. Uh, Pam and I have been working together now for probably four years. Um, she was brought into the University of Iowa Community Credit Union to start a bottom-up improvement culture. Uh, it was one of the more exciting kind of relationships that we developed at Kinexus because we're very passionate about engaging employees and, and generating ideas from, I hate it to even call it the bottom-up, but mm -hmm. from the employees in the organization. So 
Can you maybe talk a little bit about that journey? Sure. Um, I joined the University of Iowa Community Credit Union in, in July of 2015. And I put our business model up there because I wanted you to understand um, process improvement or at least driving for efficiency didn't start when I started. It, it was something that's been part of our core foundation for the last 20 years. So, but when I walked in, I was handed literally spreadsheets or sent spreadsheets of ideas that they were driving from employees, but the action wasn't taken. So um, we have grown uh, to 5.2 billion in the three years I started, and we were just under 3 billion. So that's just in three years we've grown a couple billion. Uh, we grow fast and it's organic and we move very fast. Um, we've got 18 branches and soon to be 19 and 485 employees. When I started, we had about 250. So that tells you um, how we're adding to the organization. We have been a Conexus co customer since uh, December 2015 and, and really you know, starting that lean journey with bottom-up innovation. Yeah, and and it, it feels like it's kind of part of when you come to work here, you're going to participate in improvement. You know, it's part of the initial training of new employees. Absolutely. Uh, we bring employees in for two-day onboarding, and I join them on the second day and just spend the time to get them, I guess, um, familiar with. I don't call it the eight ways, but we review how inefficiencies creep into the process just so that they can recognize it. I always challenge them that they see things differently They've got a fresh perspective. And maybe they came to financial services, but they you know, worked at Enterprise Rental Car before that. That's fine. They've got a different perspective, and I just want to help them understand what to look for and really to understand their job while they're being trained. If you don't understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, how can you improve it? You can't. So we talk about that and just get them familiar with the whole process. And then I do challenge them in the 60 days that they're in their job, because we get back together on day three, um, uh, about 60 days out, I challenge them, just find one thing you could submit in Conexus that you observed while you were learning that you think we could be better at. I mean, I don't even put in any other terms than that, just really simple, straightforward. And then when we get back together on day three, uh, we review those ideas and we talk about it. And if there are no ideas, and I hear this a lot, There'll be no ideas. And I'll say, well, why no ideas? Well, we're so focused on learning that we didn't feel like we had anything to offer. And this last group I, I just had uh, last week, the one guy said, like, you really want our ideas. And I'm like, uh, yes, absolutely. Whether it's about the onboarding process or how you're learning and, and the job that you're in, uh, we want your ideas because you're closer to the work than, than any of us. So um, it's been really successful, I think, engaging employees right out of the start. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I feel like these guys have as good of a correlation between their leadership commitment to mm -hmm. engaging employees, the processes that Pam has built, and then the way that she uses Kinexus at multiple levels in the organization. This is an example of a manager. Um, right. you, know, you, you talk about it. You're, okay, you're driving so, for multiple. So we drive change a couple of different ways, uh, and, and it keeps evolving. Again, this is a three-year you know, journey, so it's always we're constantly looking for ways we can make it better. But we started out with some of our departments uh, and, and even our retail branches. We're looking at a manager board. Employees have an employee board that they could look at, and we want everyone to see everything. So very rarely do we use the private feature, very rarely. Um, we want everybody to see it and be engaged in the process. So this is just an example of an employee or a manager board. Um, and this has evolved because, again, same thing Mike said, um, people don't get into a new software and then they struggle with how to do it. And it's so customizable that they struggle with even trying to set up their own board with their cards on it. So uh, we came up with this and, and tried to make it simple so you can see everything that they're responsible for and what they need to pay attention to. And just so I'm clear, the goal is if an employee has an idea, mm -hmm. a suggestion, their manager needs to get involved right. in that process. Yes. Um, the managers review them. Uh, most of our departments, they review them as a team together. So they get together on a weekly basis and they review what's in there as a new status and talk about it and then decide, prioritize, you know, does this go before the one we're already working on because it's really important, or do we put it into a plan status and say, hey, we want to do this, but just not right now. We've got some other things that we're working on. Um, so that's really how they, they use it. And so each manager has a board mm -hmm. like this? And, well, this and is a default board. 
Got so, it. so when you sign in, if you're Pam Peters and you're a manager, you've got that role, that's the board I can go to. Now we've got a lot of other boards out there you can poke around in. So this is, this is the default employee board. Right, and this you... is the default employee board. So our employees don't have to struggle with like, where do I go or how do I find things? It's right here for them. And then I think in that top, top right corner where it says give credit, it's a hyperlink and it takes you in to like all the ideas that have been completed so that we, you know, employees want, are curious. I mean, what are other departments doing? And they want to poke around. So we try to make it easy where it just launches them right into completed ideas from other areas so they can find them. I'm assuming this this board, the manager board, these are evolving boards. Oh, yeah. How, how do you work with the CE team as these boards Evolve. Well, How often do you engage with us or do you do most of this on your own? You know, um, well, let's see. Noah has been through the whole rigor between myself. I have one other person in my department and uh, Noah and Jake are great uh, as far as helping us think through how we want to build something or what we're looking to accomplish and then how we can make that happen using um, using the, the tool. Yeah, I, I think what draws me to these kinds of conversations is that these boards, you know, you we don't prescribe a certain employee board. You have to figure out what your employees need to see and need access to, and then you have to build around that. And if you're not engaging the CE team to do that, you should be. You know, they, yeah. they see this with everyone in the room, and they're in a really good position to make recommendations on, on how other people are using the system. Yeah, and I was going to say, one of the things that we do is we just talk to our employees. We talk to department leaders and, and our senior team, and we say, you know, what do you want to see? And, and then we build it for them. Or if it's just simply all of our employees who are looking for a way to pay attention to what's going on and know what they need, we, we build these boards, and then we use it with a test group and say, hey, play around with it. What do you see that you like? What do you, what do you want? And we'll change it. So we really get our feedback. We do a lot of uh, surveys and um, employee participation. That's great. Yeah. What, what about these efficiency teams? This was different than just a... Okay, so the efficiency team um, are our larger departments. Like our mortgage department, we have 120 people in that department. And in sub-departments, so processing, uh, closing, underwriting, well, they can't make a change in the process without <laughs> impacting the others. And they were finding it was getting really clunky and hard to how do we make a decision, what do we work on, which one first, and how does this impact the other area. So they created a retail, or they created a mortgage efficiency team comprised of about eight people um, for the various groups, and then they get together and they look at all the ideas that have been submitted, and then they prioritize and decide which ones you know, they're gonna work on, which ones maybe that they're not going to pursue because they've got other things um, that are going to improve the process and we don't need that. And we just make sure that we get back to our employees and let them know, hey, great idea, thanks for submitting it, but here's why we're not moving forward with it. Similar thing for the service team? Um, uh, service team's a little different. The service team is actually a group of about 18. And I, when I say cross-functional, I mean literally cross-functional. I have my CEOs on the team, marketing, uh, we've got wealth management, we've got representation from retail, uh, training, HR. It is cross-functional. And what we did here is we found that we had then bigger initiatives, a simple idea that would come through, but it really touched a lot of different departments and areas within the organization. And it was really hard to get the change to occur because you were creating all these people, pulling them in. So we created a service team. We're doing this for this year to see how it works. And what we've managed to accomplish has really been pretty phenomenal. We've taken ideas, simple ideas like one uh, employee newer to the organization said, hey, I'm trying to learn a lot about my job, but I don't have a resource. And you put me through training, but I still need something at my fingertips. And they, they ask us for a knowledge base, an online knowledge base with a resource they could go to. This was one of the things that this team worked on. Oh. So we break it out and we use the people on the team usually have probably three, four, maybe five subgroups that are working on various things that are cross-functional in nature. Yeah. What, what I love is, you know, we have a process for manager employee, a process for the efficiency team, a mm -hmm. process for the service team. If you're trying to create a one-size-fits-all process for everybody, you're Sorry. probably missing out on some opportunity to engage. And so, you know, I would just implore you to think through that as you're developing processes for the different teams that you've got. All right, Eric, you're next. Right. You're, you're stuck. You're on stage now. Yeah. Uh, 
So Eric is a process engineering manager for DHL. You guys, I'm sure, all know DHL. Tell us a little bit about kind of the lean journey. Right. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and let me drill down a little bit as well, DHL. Um, uh, you know, I try not to think about the scale or scope of DHL because it's depressing. You know, nobody wants to be marginalized into thinking that they're one of 500,000 associates and one of the largest employers in the world. Um, so everything gets division. Uh, and, and so I am a part of DHL supply chain, which is also the largest supply chain organization in the world. And we, we're larger than our next uh, biggest competitor by three times. Um, and then as a subset of that... I am a part of one specific account in North America. Now that one specific account in North America has 1,500 associates. Um, and, uh, and the forklift drivers within that account uh, travel 37,000 miles on a forklift every week. So um, they're around the world in four and a half days. Um, the, uh, the, you, and we talk about involving the different departments and things like that. Well, we have quite a few different departments. Um, anything that's uh, within the supply chain, we do for this one specific customer as well. Anything from inbound uh, to all sorts of inventory functions to um, working in the plants um, to uh, doing a, a delivery creation um, and uh, all the way to uh, outbounds and returns. The uh, um, challenge that we have ahead of us is uh, w with, uh, with technology, as you have seen with Internet of Things, you've, you've read about uh, blockchain, you've read about um, automated vehicles and things like that. We're very much in play with automated vehicles, and there's one showing on the screen there, which, uh, um, uh, which is uh, called the, um, the F-Bot. But um, there are... Um, with those 1,500 associates, there's obviously a contrast to where the industry, our customer, and our company want to go in terms of reducing cost. And we know um, there are a couple different things that come from that. I don't believe, as somebody that works in innovation on a daily basis, I don't believe that people are going to be replaced anytime soon. Now, the, uh, the, the truth of the matter um, is it, and, and, and truth be told, that a lot of our customers don't even understand yet is, all right, what are you replacing? You're replacing a, 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 a trained driver who wants to get it right the first time, um, uh, uh, do it with uh, enthusiasm and a can-do attitude, or right, th three pillars in DHL. Wants to train that, you would train people to think that way. You can't train a machine to think that way. Mm -hmm. Further on, the machine has to be maintained and monitored, and all of these things are disparate technologies, right? So you, an AGV might not talk to a conveyor belt. It might not talk to an ASRS or an automated storage and retrieval system. So all of these things require technicians and things like that. So uh, there's, there's sort of a come up in, in, in the whole thing, the near term. The, bedrock of any innovation is to start with data. And, uh, and so that, that's how we drive the, you know, our, how we evaluate the customer priorities. How do we get 3% savings year on year? How do we uh, maintain safety and quality, right? At, on time, fill rates, all of those, the core metrics of, if, if we don't maintain those metrics, there's no meat. All driven with data. And are, right. are, are you employees trained on how to like use data in their day-to-day -day jobs? Yes, in, in different ways. You, you, you wouldn't believe it, but uh, all of these different things that, um, you know, not everybody is wired, you know, when they're driving a forklift. You're not even allowed um, to have a, uh, a phone, you know, in the facility. So um, you have to be connected in, in, in one way, shape, or form. We do that in a couple different ways. We do, um, uh, uh, in terms of what we call our operations management system, which is a, a, a way of holding meetings and, and communicating with people in, in a very real-time way on, on performance. And we've uh, instituted kiosks for Kinexus as well. And, and that's really where we started in one site in Brantford, Ontario, 
they wanted uh, sort of a virtual suggestion box. So we, we, we put in kiosks of these associates who didn't have the ability to get on a laptop or hack even really on a, a mobile phone can uh, get to somewhere and and it's and and we've already we've already discussed how much better this this is than the, you know your your normal suggestion box, right? Um, well, let's just talk a little bit about that though. When someone put an idea into the kiosk, what happened to it? Right, and it goes to a a specific person within uh, with within the warehouse that that routes it, and 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 uh, we are we are held to. You know, we want uh, you know we we want to get this at least routed within 24 hours, and so um, and and we you know show the visibility the visibility of it's there to the associates as well. So we're we're showing where we are on the on the on yeah. on the guideline. I would tell you just from my talks with people, if you're thinking about doing an employee suggestion box, you know we use the word sometimes a little negatively. I don't think the suggestion box is the problem. I do think the process after the suggestion box can be a problem. So, you know, I would I would advise you talk to someone like Eric, talk to someone like Pam, talk to Mark, you know, how you answer people, how rapidly you answer people, how you engage them in implementing the change makes a huge difference than if the suggestion just goes into a box right. to die. And I think these guys really kind of push the envelope on that, how do you guys use Kinexus today? How do you use the we, project tracker? And right, yeah, it, we we um, have boards that are not necessarily. You know, we do have individual and site based boards. We also have project based boards, uh, where it's been very useful to share a board with the project team. And it used to be um, as a continuous improvement advisor is one of my little hats that I wear. Uh, you know, it, it's it's like Ben Stein and and uh, you know Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What's what's the line? Bueller, yeah. Bueller. You know, you ever get into one of those major? And that was and that's what it felt like. So um, having a specific board where somebody could, could look in the board, um, drill down in from the the project or the improvement into the item, and then and and, and make their updates online um, has been very instrumental to the calls because. Um, we all have very busy schedules, um, and and not everybody can make project calls, um, and it's so that, that's been instrumental. And you'll do that just on an overhead projector, like when you get into the meeting, you'll right. have Kinexus up on the overhead projector. Or, or if it's a, a you know, we could have several sites on a webinar and 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 have the board that way. Yep, and then uh, you know the next next level for us is okay. This is all great. We still got to make the three percent year on year. All right. So, how do I how do I um, uh, you know quantify that in a way? Um, and you know, so you're using Kinexus to quantify right, that. That's right. part of the impact of those projects. Right. And 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 so it takes us from an idea of innovation ideas or cost saving ideas, which we have five year roadmaps at each one of our sites. Um, and so the this year is uh, committed to Kinexus. Um, for for each site, so we have ability and visibility throughout um, the the seven sites in North America to go go look at each other's ideas, go look at uh, how how improvement is happening, um, and then from a leadership level, they you know they all too often they want to see what the dollars are, but yep. yeah. Yep. All right, we saved we saved Brent for last. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest. Um, Brent and I have been talking, working together for at least a couple of years now. Uh, I find CHS to be a fascinating organization. Will you just kind of tell us a little bit about it? Fascinating organization. That's I a mean, perfect way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Community Health Systems is 118 hospitals now. Whenever I first started three years ago, it was 205, I think, my first day. Uh, so one of the primary problems that we're trying to solve um, in the organization is you know, we, we always had a strategic plan. We always had the PowerPoint deck. And we, we did a decent job at presenting that PowerPoint deck and, that, and agreeing upon what we were trying to do as an organization. But after that presentation, uh, the execution um, just fell apart because of there was no management system. There was no way to actually ber operationalize those strategic plans. You know, and there was no way to tell at the end of the year 
um, you know, when we came back around to the next uh, strat plan season, you know, how many of those strategies were executed and how many were, were not. Um, so that was one of the primary um, reasons uh, for Connexus is to help bring visibility uh, to the plan and help bring visibility to are we winning or losing, are we working on the right stuff, uh, and are we developing our people and holding them accountable. Um, yeah, so. yeah, one of the things I, I mean, that struck me that was somewhat unique is, I mean, we're talking about 118 hospitals. Strategy plan level is at the C-suite, you know, which is five to four to six people for each one. That's a large group of people just doing C-suite strategic planning. And their long-term challenge of, hey, we don't know what happened last year, right? We're just trying to get through this year's strategy planning what happened last year and how are we going to plan for next year so we we know what happened um i don't want to say it was unique but it was a bigger challenge for these guys than it is for i know a lot of people out here um which is why it was kind of interesting it, how do you guys use how have you set up kinexus how do you guys use kinexus yeah well inside that locations bar there there's um, uh, all 118 hospitals so so we set out to say you know, and it was very interesting how we had to learn, you know, learn by doing and, and modify this approach as we went. You know, we started out with, hey, you know, we could build a strategy dashboard, one size fits all, and we can put, you know, the strategies there and our executives can click around and see, you know, the task status bar, improvement status bar. We kind of set up the strategies as projects and the improvements were the key activities or the sub strategies, if you will, within cardiology or neurology. Uh, and then the tasks were, of course, the, the major things required to get that stuff done. Um, you know, so we started there and then, you know, we, we had since then learned, you know, we weren't asking the right questions, um, you know, when we were, we were doing that because, you know, we had this one board fits all type approach and then, but we weren't, we weren't effectively cascading down to the next level. So, so this, um, you know, dashboard is, is effective at the, the CEO level. At the market level, uh, it gives them a nice snapshot, and it and it really you know was from a um, individual meetings with the executives saying you know what problem are you trying to solve and how are we going to improve the work, and then we reverse engineered you know the dashboard to to fit those those answers um, you know but to the next level of the organization uh, you know it changes a little bit. And I mean this is a new standard. Mm -hmm. Right, so you've got 118 locations. You're trying to drive a standard on how they do reporting and visibility on these strategic plans. How's that been received? What what's been kind of best practice? What's been challenging yeah, about getting certainly one problem at a time. Um, you know, I think we run into the same similar you know um, um, roadblocks or barriers. You know, folks are so used to their current way of doing it. So we're so used to emailing those spreadsheets around and tracking this and that, and every service line is tracked differently. And we just decide on the random Friday at the end of the month, hey, we need to know what's going on uh, for the past month. And here's everybody, all the directors are just sending in their stuff to the, the administrative assistants and we're scrambling to put it all together. Um, and even though that we have a beautiful uh, way to, to eliminate a lot of waste from that process, it's still change. Um, you know, and it's still a matter of, you know, clicking some different buttons. So uh, there's been some early adopters and we've played around with, you know, different functions of, of the business. You know, so, so taking the strategy and saying, well, you know, one of the biggest gaps, you know, probably everywhere, I, I, you know, from going to 118 hospitals, I see the, the, uh, the consistent nature of there is no management system in place. You know, so when you get to the next question after what problem are you trying to solve and well, how are we going to improve the work? Well, um, there's not a clear answer. Uh, and that's where things start falling apart, you know, from a, a, a system perspective, because unless we're going to, um, you know, have Kinexus be capable of, of telepathy based execution. And where I just we're working on that. You know, we're working I, on that. Yeah. When when I think of this uh, of the solution or the update, it just automatically updates. You know, there has to be some physical change going on. There has to be some kind of management system in place where we get around the table when we ask. You know, or did we execute on that? 
You know, so it's just not automatic. And, and the biggest gaps that we see on and most of our hospitals are there's no weekly, daily, monthly discipline. The habit. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the process discipline. Yeah. What, what happens when someone pushes back, when they don't want to use this? Do you, do you guys have air cover? Yeah, yeah, we have support from the from the top, but but we usually flip that around and say, well, you know, so what's the alternative? Um, I, I mean, I, if, if somebody's got a better way, you know, we're we're all about it. And we certainly don't come to the table and say you're going to use Kinexus and this is this is the way it's going to be. It's more of a, you know, asking them the open-ended questions and getting the the actual box one of the A3 filled out. And saying, okay, so this is the problem you're trying to solve. Well, what if we had a way to capture those? And what if we had an effective way to to cascade that down to every level of the organization? And then what if we got them engaged in the system and we were able to, to manage the execution of that and give you the visibility um, on a real-time basis? Now, this doesn't replace you going to the gimma. This doesn't replace Mission Control Wall. But it just enhances it because we can see it real, real time. Um, yeah, I think that communication plan is hugely important for the change management. Right? I think people don't give it enough um, credence or importance in what they do because you're going to have these conversations where people won't just line up to use it. Right? right. You're going to have to kind of help them through it. Yeah, and it was interesting. You know, we had a, a market CEO. You know, say. After we loaded up all the strategies in there for five hospitals, um, said, "Well, it, Kinexus is too cumbersome," and then we said, "Okay, well, why is it too cumbersome?" And they pulled up their dashboard and, "Well, look at all this. You know, I can't possibly manage all of it." And I said, "Well, is your ability to manage all this dependent on Kinexus, or is it just you? It's impossible to manage all this because it looks like you got a lot of work in there since you got 79 strategies." So, you know, uh, is, there, is there a system out there that's going to be able to do it? And, and then it was like the light bulb went off, and, and I said, you know, more work doesn't always mean more results. You know, so, so you can load this thing up with 115,000, you know, ideas, but if you're going to execute on one of them, then you just wasted your time, um, you know, filling out uh, the rest. You know, so going back to that. Love it. T talk a little bit about the service line steering teams, what, I'm, what I really like about this board is kind of that, that top left card where you're giving them some standard work and then yeah. the, the questions that you ask, you know, it doesn't have to be the normal titles that we would think through on these types of cards. Right. This is trying to influence, you know, the, the management system a little bit deeper than just at the executive level. So, you know, when, when we ask, you know, about, well, what is the work and we understand the work and we understand what needs to be improved. And we say, well, how are we gonna wrap a management system around this? How are we gonna engage the people that do the work? Um, um, and not necessarily every frontline team member, but at least get it down far enough in the organization where managers and directors uh, can use it. And, and that's getting with them and understanding what they're managing, um, you know, cause they're managing stuff that's completely different. So we make, um, you know, so service line dashboards to help facilitate you know, those, those answers. So we get the answers and we say, okay, so this is what, what the work content is that you need to manage. This is how often you're going to manage it. Well, what if you had a dashboard that every time you needed to run that meeting, you had a way to effectively do it. Uh, so we, we put the standard work for running the value stream steering team, you know, huddle there. Um, but then we, we set up the board and in, in sequence to the standard work to say, you know, are we working on the right stuff? Are we sustaining what we've already done? Uh, you know, we don't want to just take on 17 more projects if we haven't execute, executed the two uh, with sustainment. Um, are we winning or losing? You know, so uh, the, the locations bar, you know, certainly as they change that, it just brings in more or less, you know, uh, charts. Um, so if the CEO is looking at it, he can look at the, the emergency department from every hospital in his, his uh, region. Um, of course, that's uh, a whole, whole lot more substance. but. Um, and it just kind of goes with the, the standard work um, on how they do it. What about the what about the visibility? Yeah, so recruitment. So physician recruitment for us is probably one of the most collaborative um, strategies that we have. Um, it has a lot of a lot of folks from legal to med staff development to recruiters to CEOs. 
um, credentialing, you know, you name it, uh, they're all, um, you know, kind of attached. So there's two parts there. You know, the first, first thing that Kinexus allows us to do is probably, uh, you know, get to a, a standard work. You know, if you think about uh, physician recruitment and onboarding, there should be a standard. We, we kind of do the same thing every time. So how do we make that process visible? And then how do we make the platform to where if I'm managing that work, I have a, a quick way to figure out uh, what the status is. So this used to be a spreadsheet that was emailed uh, uh, around the world uh, and, and filled out and copied and pasted and all that stuff. And you know we we built that um, in there. And then you know the physician recruiters have their own kind of dashboard. Looks a little bit different. Depends on what you're managing. So. I'm going to say thank you here. We're going to run out of time quickly, but does anyone have any questions that we want to talk about in the next, in the little bit of time we have? I'll, I'll share a little bit of my thoughts. What I'm blown away by in this panel is how different all the screens looked, right? I mean, I, what we say it all the time, Kinexus is configurable, but to me, that's what configuration means. Right, one's doing a, a really in-depth strategy deployment across 118 C-suite groups. Right, one's has a kiosk in a manufacturing and a, a supply chain organization where people don't even have computer access. Right, and so so if you're not, you know, if you're seeing these things on the screen and you're seeing, wow, I see some applicability in my organization. That's where we want you to engage our CE team. That's why that team is there, is to have those conversations with you. And, and they have the experience working with these guys and others, and I feel like they're just a resource that you should be using mm -hmm. to try to develop these sort of things. These are all PDCA cycles, or PDSA cycles, however you want to say it. You have to try this. You have to sell people on it. You have to get their habits going in the right direction. But I think this is a great example of, of how to utilize Kinexus in a number of different situations within the organization. So can we give these guys a big round of applause, please? Thank you. Thank you.